right, so on the ride home yesterday, we hit 600 miles, 622 actually by the time we got to the garage here. Got the bike all warmed up. Chickens are just having a blast out there. So I'm gonna let this cool down just a tad, let the oil drain down to the bottom of the motor, and I'm gonna pull these four bolts out while I wait. I apologize for the daylight that's shining through behind the bike, but it is a beautiful day out. I am not going to hide that under a bushel basket. When you get to the last bolt, make sure you hang on to this meaty skid plate that they've got on here. Move the finger. 17. Chicken sure are a lot of fun, but they do make a lot of noise, and I'm always concerned that they're being eaten. So that does happen often. Oh my gosh. Am I going the right way here? Yikes. That is ridiculous. Okay, I'm gonna go see what we're doing. What? What is wrong? Do you noise for no reason? Oh, you're upset about the daughter, okay. Hi, Duke. Oh, why did that need to be that tight? Oh my gosh. You bashed my head on the bike. All right, so this is gonna, we wanna project that a little bit here, so be ready. I think I got my crush washer on my drain plug, and here we go. So while that's slowly dripping away, I'm going to remove my fill plug here. Doubt there's any air locked up in there, but just in case there is, I'm looking very closely to make sure I'm not going to drop any dirt down into the case. So I'm going to clean off any debris that's on here so when I put it back in, it doesn't drop into the motor. I'm also going to gently clean out the rim here. And next thing to do is going to be pull a filter off. Which apparently I'll need a tool for. Man, that's not going to work. Ridiculous. We are going to have a little more coming out of here then. Did not put my drain plug back in so that can still trip out of there. When you pull this off, you are going to have some spilling out of here. Still some coming out of the bottom of it and then there will also be some in your filter. Very important at this point to make sure that Especially since they really, very important at this time to make, I'm getting, having my doors open. At this time, it is very important to make sure, especially since they cranked this so tight, I can't pull it out, make sure that your seal is still around here and not stuck to the block. So I do have some residual dirt around here that I'm gonna make sure I clean up. I'm also gonna do the same thing with my drain plug. If you are interested, whoops, I'm spilling it everywhere. If you're interested in the, you'll have to read it upside down, how about that? If you're interested in the stock filter number, then tilt your screen upside down. If you're watching on a TV, well then, you just have to stand on your head. All right, so while this is still kind of dripping away, I'm going to kind of tilt the bike around a little bit just to make sure that I've got everything out of there. All right, so with everything pretty much drained out here, I'm gonna put my drain plug back in. I do still have my crush washer on there. I think they do recommend that you replace this, but uh, I'm gonna go rogue here and use the original one. Regardless of what you decide to do, make sure you've just got one on here, and if you're gonna use the original, make sure it didn't fall into your drain pan. Careful not to get any dirt on the end of it. As I mentioned earlier, I did clean the plug and the mating surface off. 
And I'm going to tighten this down right away. I am not going to use a torque wrench. Uh, definitely make up your own mind on that. I'm not telling you not to. But if you do, of course, look up the torque spec. should be in your owner's manual. Next, I'm going to put my new filter on here. And I will put links down in the description. I did get all my oil change supplies off of Amazon. And it seemed like that was actually really a pretty good deal. A lot of times when you buy oil online, it seems like it is not at all a good deal. But I got some... Uh, some four quart jugs that are, I think, end up being like six bucks a quart, which is a pretty good deal for Yamalube. So, here's the new filter. Again, make sure you got your rubber gasket on here. Ooh, and it actually looks like they've got it greased up for you. That's kind of nice. Generally, I would say you want to stick a fresh coat of uh, oil around the edge of this, but I guess I don't think I'm going to. I mean, if they've got the grease on there, that should lube it up on the way in. But if yours didn't come with this grease, make sure you grab either some old oil or some new oil and just uh, rub it around on the, uh, the seal there just so that doesn't bind up when you're tightening it. Thread that on, don't knock any dirt in there. My hands are a little oily, so this is gonna be difficult. But all you really need to do is just get this pretty much as tight as you can get it with your hands. You don't need to tighten it with a tool. So for oil, this is what I decided to go with. Uh, of course, make your own decision, but this is what the owner's manual recommends. 2.75 quarts, I believe. Looks like it's a little bit overfilled here. It's a little above four quarts, but I want to go down one, two, 0.75. You guys can't see what I'm doing. Maybe somebody else can chime in here, but as far as running synthetic, I think you want to wait a couple oil changes before you do that. I've got about two and a half in there. I think what I'll do is take this back out. Then before I fire it up, I'm just going to, of course, double check that my filter and my drain plug are in there. I think I will get some sort of oil light here, I believe, to begin with. But that should go away. And if it doesn't, shut the bike off. There we go, went off right away. Looks like engine temp is still at 118. I'm gonna let this run uh, just a little bit. Just kind of pump some oil through there, kind of warm the oil that I dumped in there up and then I will check the level. Okay, so I shut the bike down after it warmed up to like 160. Uh, I have no idea if that's the right temperature that you want to hit or not, but uh, it, it ran long enough. I think everything should be at least warmed up enough to get a good reading. While I wait for everything to drain down into the bottom here, I'm gonna put the bash plate back on. Then I'm actually gonna wipe off the few little drips that are coming from the oil filter and the drain plug, just to make sure that when I look down there after a couple of rides, if there's any oil there, I'll know that it's new oil and something has loosened up. So while I was down here tightening this stuff up, I got a good look at the bottom of the skid plate. And I definitely did not realize that this thing was that full of holes. It is kind of ridiculous. I, I guess now I understand why people have been saying that you need to replace this. And to be honest, when I mean, people always told me that about my KLR too, when I had the stock plastic plate on it, and for the majority of the riding that I did, I never really needed anything more. I did end up going with the metal plate. There were some instances after that that I was glad that I had it, I guess. With this stock plate, I thought it's metal. I mean, it, it should be good enough, right? Why not? But now after seeing that, I, I kind of feel like I mean, it's gonna help, but maybe not as much as it should. So maybe we will have to get a different skid plate for this. However, uh, I guess no matter what hits it, it'll, it'll just bend these bars up that it's attached to anyways, right? So now that this has had a chance to cool down a bit, I will tip this thing up so it's straight up and down. We'll get a look at the oil level there. What I like to do is just kind of put the bike at a point where it's just balancing because then you know it's going to be straight up and down. So. You guys can probably see it better than I do. How does it look? It looks blurry. So that is just about halfway uh, between the, the low and the high mark. And I think I really only put about two and a half quarts in there. Definitely don't want too much in there. I guess if it's between the bars, it's probably best to just leave it. So I really don't know how accurate this line on here really is, but now that I think about it, this actually, like I said at the beginning here, was above four quarts just a tad. 
so I might have put exactly uh, 2.75 in there, but I would just recommend kind of dump it in about however much you think, a little bit less than, than you would think at first. You can always add, thank you, Colonel Sanders. You can always add more, uh, it's a lot harder to take oil out once it's in. So just be cautious on your first pour and then uh, check it and put a little more in if you need to. Come on you guys, really? Y'all enjoying the nice day out here? It's beautiful, isn't it? Isn't it? What do you want, Bernard? What'd you say, Ricky? Hmm? Talking to me? Got something to say, Colonel Sanders? How about you, Bernard? Now the chickens are coming in the garage. Stay out of here. <laughs> Which one of you put your poop feet all over my seat? Hmm? Yeah. Looking at you, Pearl. <laughs> so the oil change is just a small portion of the stuff that needs to be done at the 600 mile mark. Uh, you're supposed to replace the air filter. You're supposed to get the fuel injection something or other timed or synchronized or something like that. I'm not really sure when I'm gonna do that. Uh, I think the weather's supposed to turn pretty bad here, so I don't think I'm gonna quite get it into the shop yet this year. Uh, the oil change I think should probably be done as close to 600 as possible. The other stuff, I guess it should also be done as close to 600 mile mark as possible. I'll probably put a few more miles on before I take it in, but uh, we'll see. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure and give it a like. Uh, again, this is not supposed to be a how to, I am not a mechanic, nor have I ever been, nor do I claim to be. Uh, make sure you check out your own owner's manual, use the specs, do whatever makes you comfortable, uh, do it right, don't, uh, don't do what I did just because I showed it to you in the video today. This is for entertainment purposes. I knew that was gonna happen. This is for entertainment purposes only. I have to say, this thing sure does look nice cleaned up. I think it's gonna be hard not to wash this thing. I was doing just fine, but now that it's clean, I don't know. <laughs> Generally, I don't like to wash bikes because then the next time I take them out, I'm afraid to take it off road because I don't want to get it dirty again. And I love getting bikes dirty. That's the whole, whole point of an adventure bike. So if you guys want to see me getting this bike dirty, again, if you want to see more videos from me, make sure you click the Swanky Cat logo, make sure you hit the bell after you subscribe and you have the settings set so it shows you every video or anytime I put one out. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care, stay safe, stay swanky, get out and ride. If you can't, then uh, let's check out some more videos. Thanks for watching, guys.